Okay, Lilani should be coming. Did Oba? Hey. Hey. I was trying to like send it to people, so I was like, ugh. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't see my screen because I'm trying to. So why is it like you cannot find Taino Library? What is this mess? I think she's still on her live. She has to come off of it. Hold on. It's okay, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all should be used to this because <laughs> this is like, yeah, <laughs> we have a lot of like hiccups. Yeah, I think her. She may need to restart her phone because I just I just looked and I saw I had another message. So that's why I was like, "Let me see." Oh, there she goes. Okay. I feel like I gotta smack my iPad screen. I have no idea why. Hello, ladies. There you go. Hello. This is a lot better. I can actually see you guys moving and everything. Like, yeah, like you're you're so much clearer. You're yeah. so clear. You gotta turn on your camera, though. I'm about to. I'm about to. I was in the middle of my pants. Make it a little cute. A little. Clearer. How do I make you a moderator? We like I I you know I'm 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 not a luddite, but I don't. TikTok and I are not friends. Why is it asking me effects? And oh, hello, here we are. Yay! <laughs> Wait, how do I make you a moderator? Oh, I found, I think I found it. Is this? No, I don't want to, I don't know if that's the right button. It might be like with the guest button somewhere. The layout's a little bit different when you're a guest versus the host. No, that's gonna like disconnect you. I'm not doing that. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. I get we gonna we gonna like I don't know. Cause I don't wanna be here all night trying to figure this out. So we just gonna go with it and I'll just kick people out because I'm cool with that. I'm good at that. So Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Kind of get my notes back, resituate. Where were we? So, um, should I go ahead and reiterate the disclaimer since we're technically in a new live? Yes. Okay. So, disclaimer: um, if some if a topic is covered as far as like a ceremony or what, and details aren't given, that's on purpose. Uh, there aren't going to be any like step by step or whatever for like ceremonies. Uh, please don't ask either of the spiritual readers here in the respective boxes for free readings or anything like that. And if you happen to be a spiritual person and offer readings and all of that good stuff, please um, do not self-promote in the comments. So, um, yeah, I figured that since you are the Bahika K, um, that it would be best for you to be the one addressing what Leilani was talking about earlier as far as like um, just as far as vocabulary is concerned on like who are the actors and semi and all of that fun stuff. Yeah. And of course I always invite everybody, either of you to join in with any uh, commentary because as I always like to say, as in general, our people are reconnecting people overall, not just us individually. So we are all in the process of reconnecting and learning and things will continuously evolve the more that we read, dissect, analyze, compare things, talk together and, you know, try to figure out what likely was, what is the closest recreation of, of the practices that were actually those of our ancestors, right? So there's no, and I think I've said this, it, it's, you know, became a running joke in one of the lives early on that there's no book this is how you tie you know right that we that uh so and and with spirituality in general it's important to remember that you know everything has energy everything is alive so even practices 
don't stay stagnant. They grow and they evolve and they change over time as people change, as situations change, environments, location, and all of that is really, really critical in understanding um, our you know, indigenous spirituality because we are displaced from our homelands. And so that will affect um, how we practice and the things that we have access to. And so it, it's important to understand and know all of that. Um, that being said, I'm going to try to say things without saying too many things <laughs> because uh, as as Elba mentioned, and then this this is also where it gets tricky with Taino spirituality because with all indigenous practices and most like anything ATR or whatever, they are closed practices. And, um, and Leilani, I don't know if you want to take a moment and just speak of on like in a broader spectrum sense of what it is when something is a closed practice in spirituality. Uh, well, we can take that in a bunch of different directions, but for the most part, you know, in this particular circumstance, it really is more so for preservation purposes and for, um, you know, and to not dilute it so much. You know, you want to keep the, the circle small so that, you know, the the information that is going to be passed down to future Tainos who are reconnecting is consistent information. It's all been agreed upon. It's, you know what I mean? So because we're still in those early phases, we need to we need to close ranks and really just get together and iron shit out. Um, but in normal circumstances, when we're talking about, like, for example, you know, ATRs and things like that, what we're looking at are closed practices due to the fact that these are a, a, a chain of spiritual technologies that have been passed down through an unbroken line. And like even like despite slavery, despite genocide, despite all that, these practices made their way unbroken to the Americas and to the Caribbean. So that that is partially why it's a closed practice because it's mostly oral. Um, but I, I feel, uh, you know, when we talk about closed practices because people, you know, kind of throw that term around, like a lot it's become such a buzzword um and i think it's really really important that we're like when we're talking about closed practices you need to find out from the people themselves like don't assume don't just pick and choose or whatever it just go to the people find out and and respect it you know mm -hmm. exactly yeah and if someone tells you no we're not talking about it just accept it that's and know it. like that's that's it and there are things that um and it's really important to specifically because a lot of people who are reconnecting taino don't want to just claim taino spirituality like they're also exploring perhaps other types of spirituality i know i've mentioned that i saw it in my exploration with um, not too long ago with Mesa Blanca, which is something Elba and I have talked about trying to reconnect to our family, you know, doing that history for our personal family, you know, practices. And so, and, and it's important to remember that, that like that also plays a factor in, in things, you know, like if you can find your direct lineage into something that is a closed practice, but again, it's people. And, and so like, even if there are books that are written about things, books will give you like what's considered that surface level information that they're willing to share um and most indigenous groups not just Taino practice have that well there's like what they give to the public what's you know at the end there's various levels and so that's kind of what we want to be very very clear <laughs> about that if I start talking about something I may be tiptoeing around things if it's Taino specific because it goes to protecting the practice so that it's not taken and, you know, by people who are not understanding it or early on in their journey or sold or whatever it is. And then also at the same time, sometimes there are practices that are Yukayeke specific, meaning that within tribal communities that have been created, people have their interpretation and that's the people who, you know, belong to that community, they follow that. Um, and so that's something also to take um, into consideration. That all being said, when 
from a Taino perspective, if we're going to be talking about um, ancestral veneration, we are talking about um, two sides of the same coin, which is something that is a very common theme throughout Taino spirituality in general, which is balance and duality. That meaning you're talking about um, venerating semi or semi no and your actual blood relation ancestors. But the reason that they are two sides of the same coin is because semi are actually ancestral spirits. Um, no, and that's that, perfect. Yeah. And, I, and there's another line I usually say, and I stop myself because I won't, I won't add that here because that's when I'm with my community, that's a teaching that I, that I give them. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, so I think a lot of people um, would be, un, you know, not surprised to know that, you know, indigenous persons look at nature not as just um, a living spirit, um, but looks at nature as family. Um, and so when we talk about, you know, our semi or when we or just in general, um, when we talk about ancestral veneration and working with the spirits in general, you're looking at a very raw elemental uh, perspective as well. Um, and making sure that that's something that's honored in addition to our, our bloodlines. A hundred, a hundred percent. And it's just, um, you know, that, that understanding is a lot of people. And I know Leilani and I spoke about this, that that's something we both come across a lot. Most commonly is people always like overwhelmed by this massive information and not understanding um, what, what, you know, spirituality is in general and how that like is different from religion or, re you know, religious practice and, and all of that. But, you know, for me, and I don't know, I don't know if we talked about this when we were planning, but I always say like your indigenous identity is strongly tied to your spirituality. They are so deeply intertwined. And there's so many people that I have found recently who were stepping into the movement and reading all the books and learning all the history, but they're not grounding themselves and that spiritual practice and understanding how vital that is to your indigenous identity and how that is going to start shaping the way that you see the world so drastically. And that I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like buzzing everyone, everyone. I could hear them like behind me, like, yes, like, yes. Yeah, like, get <laughs> yeah definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, and it's, it's, when you say deeply ingrained, it, it is part of the lifestyle. I mean, it's in our food, it's in our music, it's in our dance, it's, it's all intertwined. So yeah, you're right. Being grounded in, in, in the cultura, mm -hmm. the culture, that's what it's about. Yeah. hundred percent. Oh, go ahead. Oba. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think one of the things that, that, um, that we also talked about was, um, for lack of a better way to put it, that there's magic in the mundane as far as like being grounded and, and like connected with like, you know, the, the land that you're living on and stuff like that. Um, that that in and of itself is, is part of spirituality. And like you said, K part of your indigeneity. So, you know, a lot of people look to the sky when it comes to like spiritual stuff. It's like, Oh, it's up there in the heavens. And it's like, no, it's down here at your feet well you know what I mean so it's so um, true like even even the students even the students get so shocked at some of the activities that you know you know you would assign them you know they'd be like all right so like you want me to like meditate and like say these chants and and rattle this thing and I'm like no I want you to go for a walk <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and they're like what yeah Go for a walk, observe your environment, take a deep breath, connect. And they're taking like, what the fuck? Breath. Yeah, <laughs> like taking, like, I, I said that a lot. I'm like, yeah, you can, like, drink some water, take a shower. And it's <laughs> not, <laughs> it's not, you know, like, it is, or, like, um, you know, a lot of people are, like, uh, 
I, I don't think he's on here. My partner was going to join under one of my other accounts, but he's always like, yeah, get grounded and like walk barefoot in nature and everything. I'm like, yeah, the, no, all of that's really good. But you know, we also have a lot of urban natives and we're not going to go walking outside on the concrete. It ain't, it ain't the same. So, you know, just take a deep breath and like, and it's not the same thing as meditating, but I'm just talking about connecting with your breath. And there's actually a really good book that came out called Breath. Um, with this guy written wrote it because he's like ha- he starts to get like sleep apnea or some kind of problem and it launched this whole crazy you know thing he went down the rabbit hole and studied all these things and learned that we've been breathing wrong our whole entire lives and started yep. studying all these different methods of breathing the right way to breathe you know this box breathing and everything and a lot of it yes can be related to like yoga practice and and certain other things but across spectrums of spirituality there is a great emphasis placed on the power of breath and energy and life force so just sitting with yourself and taking a breath and and appreciating the function that your body has to go through in order to to do that and what and what that is you know that that's a that's a spiritual experience you don't have to like you know wait for someone to appear and come talk to you or or weird things to happen like it, it's it is much simpler than most people want to make it out to be and that's another thing too about the ancestral veneration part because you know we we've gotten um so used to seeing everyone talk about altars 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 and it's just like you know from an indigenous perspective you know the whole earth is the altar like that's kind of the point it's all sacred it's all sacred space and so you know connecting with ancestors being outside you know especially with certain elements that we connect to you know water rocks clay all that kind of stuff get in it get in it because the ancestors are there too Mm -hmm. and i mean that's actually that's a whole other rabbit hole you know actually some of what you're saying and you're talking about and how it relates to um rattles but that's a that's a that's a different conversation um but i just wanted to let you know that that like that thread of thought is related to that Uh, (laughs) but yeah so ancestral veneration is is a lot less scary and and the best way to really kind of dip your toe into exploring spirituality and that goes with creating an altar or a sacred space and with that statement it does not have to be elaborate it does not have to be like ornate and gold and like a whole wall and uh, you know whatever it is the <laughs> ideas that people <laughs> come up with in yeah. their mind to to uh, honor their ancestors it can be you know you don't you know if you have a really small space and it's literally like a spot on the table that that's like that's where I'm gonna like make this thing and like leave it there and that's the intention because so much of spirituality is about your intention and that's this that is really part of ancestral veneration what is you know who is it that you're trying to talk to what is it that you want them to know what are you trying to express and um I know we've talked about a few times on these lives how my mother passed away in in March and I use that because most people have a a maternal figure a mother or somebody in their in their life and you know they likely feel close to them and so you know that that's a very big love like between a mother and child or 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 mother figure and and a child and so you know like if your mom was alive and there were things you like to do together or eat together or watch together those things don't have to end because they're not physically here that's what ancestral veneration is I wake up in the morning and I make a cup of coffee for myself and for my mother. I made her hot cocoa tonight because it's cold in New York and hot cocoa is one of, was one of her favorite drinks. Uh, you know, it's something as simple, as simple as that because it is the, the gesture and the intention behind it. Yeah. And that's really kind of where you start with ancestral veneration, talking to the folks 
you know. Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts and also just remember you know what is remembered lives so you know if you're for example you know the the hot cocoa example if you have children you know making the hot cocoa for your children mm -hmm. so that now you're passing that memory along to the next generation and it becomes a legacy it becomes mm -hmm. a tradition um and th these are ways in which we honor and keep things alive mm -hmm. um i think another great place to start um, when you're trying to dip your toe in this, even though I know we were talking about earlier that, you know, there's no like book and we, we haven't gotten all the rules down yet. And because of that, I think one of the first things people should do is seek an elder out or seek, you know, a behike out. Um, because, you know, if you just willy nilly just start flinging things out there, it's going to add mud to the water. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think a lot of people, you know, read a couple of books or watch a couple of YouTube videos or TikTok videos in this case, and, you know, feel like they've gotten a good enough understanding to like dip their toes in things. Um, and it's and it's one of those things, too, that it's like, OK, you think you're dipping your toe, but what you're really doing is jumping in the deep end of the pool with like no swimmies, no nothing that you've ever like no practice at all, just going for it completely and um that's not to say um throw out words like can't because you know people will be like well you know my mom is this and i'm a hereditary that okay do you the the <laughs> point that you should still however you know skilled or whatever you think you may be you should still take certain precautions and you know what i mean um do the work yeah yourself have people that you know you can you can um, seek guidance and counsel and whatever from, because otherwise you're like, you're literally a sitting duck. I mean, and that point you make is, is really valid and really, really important because, and I'm, I'm pretty confident Leilani will agree with me that keeping protections up and being guarded and being mindful of how we practice and what we do when we practice is something that never stops. Um, you know, it's not like you you gain more knowledge and you ascend or you become more aware and all of a sudden the, you know, the protocol goes out the window. Protocol is everything when it relates from ancestral veneration through ceremony and everything, especially um, when it comes to ceremony. Protocol, you know, is, is really important. And that means like um, you're placing something on your altar and you're acknowledging it and all of that, but that also means caretaking the space, keeping it clean, um, understanding that it is a source of two-way communication, which is going to lead me into the into the thing where, like, please stop taking photos of your altar or anything you consider a very sacred space. Please don't do that. And don't post it all over the internet. Because I promise you, that is the fastest way to get every kukui known to man in your home or it's your space. At night, <laughs> I promise you. I she's laughing because she knows how true it is. She know like it, like. Is it worse than whistling at night? Is it worse than what? Than whistling at night. Listen. <laughs> Listen. The Don't things, the things I have heard from people. And, and I, I say all of this and like what Oba said, it's like nobody's ever trying to scare you or tell you, no, don't do that or, or whatever. It's really about being mindful of how you're venturing down this road because we know that there are things that go bump in the night that will dress, that's like Little Red Riding Hood. They are that wolf dressed playing grandma to like get your energetic love. Because you're putting energy and intention to the offerings and caretaking and all of these things when you're exchanging the energy of the ancestral veneration because you are taking care of them and in turn building that relationship with your ancestors who will continuously take care of you. Because you are now, you know, and especially for, for from the Taino perspective, you are now a link between the past and the present. You are forming an anchor and reconnecting your line to your spiritual practice, to your identity, to all of these things. And they're so vitally important. And so 
it is a very symbiotic relationship. Like, you know, everyone's taking care of each other. But you need to be very careful and go very slowly because and be like um, we both mentioned to, you know, start with people, you know, whose photos you've seen, whose names, you know, um, you know, someone that like if they were in the same room as you and looking at you, you would kind of be able to know their energy without knowing that you knew their energy, kind of. That, that's the safest way to start, um, in, my, in my opinion, because the minute I'm- you open yourself up and you start doing things, things that are around pick up on that and they want that love. They want that light. They want that energy. Um, to- if, I can, if I can add on to yeah. that, <clears throat> um, there's, a, there's another buzzword that people love to say on here on TikTok, which is discernment. And, but I don't really think people understand just like how important that is and like what, how to apply it, how to apply it to your spiritual practices. So I'm going to give you the easiest way to apply discernment to your spiritual practices. Do it in real life. Listen, I mean, it's not that hard. They think about it. There's a statistic that says if you're someone who lives in, a, in an urban area, right, New York City, Chicago, L.A., there is a likelihood that in your time walking up and down these streets that you have passed five murderers, five murderers oh. in a day. OK, so for you to walk up and down the streets and not be observant and not, you know, assess how you're feeling when you're around certain places, people and things, then you should have there's no business, no business working with the spirit realm, no business, Mm -hmm. because that kind of discernment starts here in the physical. And, you know, it has to then leak in to our practices. And that's why it's it's so it's best rather, um, not the only right right way to do things. I'm just saying that it is ideal to start with ancestors and and people that you know for that reason because there is there is less of a need to be discerning because you already know these people. You already know them. exactly. No, and, they, they, and they can teach you that. That's another thing. Those are things that they can teach you because if you, you know, are venturing down other kinds of spiritual paths, you know, your ancestors can be there to guide, can be there to, to walk with you in certain situations. Like they can teach you all of that stuff. So that's another thing that's amazing about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think a good segue would also be something that, um, I believe you were you were the one who had brought it up when we were doing um, the pre-meeting. And that was that a lot of people ask, especially because in the Caribbean, uh, we all tend to be mixed. You know, do I have to honor, you know, leave offerings, whatever, to all of my ancestors? So, um, yeah, Um, (laughs) That's a common question that I get. That's a common question that I get, especially when I teach my ancestral classes, at least from a spiritism perspective, which I'm pretty sure for Taino, I'm pretty sure we can both agree that you don't have to acknowledge anybody you don't want to acknowledge. Like there's no hard, steady, fast rule. Nope. Um, However, I always put the caveat in. This is this is the caveat. And this may not be for Taino, but it is for spiritism, because when you take up the mantle of being a psychic medium, when you take up a mantle of being an espiritista, that is a responsibility. And so when you open that door to the ancestors and to the spirits, you now become responsible for those spirits. And so it's it becomes a situation where ignorance is bliss. Once you know, you can't unknow and so we say you you have to give life to those ancestors but in taino um practices i'm pretty sure and i'm sure you know water vixen can can answer to this that you you don't have to you don't have to venerate anyone that you don't want to especially because those kinds of energies you you know when you build these altars when you create these spaces to call these these ancestors into your space 
you are giving them a home. You're giving them an anchor to that altar, a place for them to rest. And when you start working with ancestors that, you know, are drug addicts, murderers, um, you know, what child molesters, whatever, but they just so happen to be the best uncle in the whole wide world and they loved you and they never did anything wrong with you, you're still inviting that energy into your space. It's still being anchored into your home. And so, you know, unless you're prepared, unless you have a vehicle that can show you proper protocol and proper cleansing and, and clearing type stuff i just wouldn't i wouldn't mess with it not as a beginner I what mean, about I you think... water Vixen? oh no sure. i i oh, agree with... no, no, oh you can yeah, it doesn't matter either way you're cool go ahead. <laughs> go ahead i was just gonna say no that that i am i agree it's something that comes up a lot and people are like um Oh, I, you know, what about this colonizer ancestor and and whatever? And someone in the in the chat uh, kind of touched on something that that I was gonna say that uh, Leilani and I I did speak about. Um, so yeah, like it it is ancestral veneration in a very the kind of uh, good Taino perspective is personal ceremony. And there's a difference between ceremony we do as a community that has a lot of protocol and, and guidelines and everything versus personal ceremony, which is for you and how you're choosing to have that relationship. And so you, the same way in your life, you don't get along with everybody and you don't talk to everyone. There are people that you may, you know, you have a coworker and like, you know, you exchange pleasantries, but they're not the person you go have drinks with. And, and, you know, that, that's the same, the same kind of, of thing. And um, the only thing I will add to that is what someone mentioned in, in the comments is you do need to be mindful that if in life you had family members that did not get along, um, in the spirit life, they may not get along. And so you may not be able to have them, um, you know, together in the same place, or you can test it out and, and see, and if, you know, things don't feel right, or people don't like each other, you know, separate them. And, and, you know, that, that's kind of what it is, you know, when people move on and become ancestors and choose to do the work of ancestors because that that that's a whole other conversation but and and entering and entering that space and choosing to do that you know that there's also this kind of agreement that they're that they're stepping into this role to do this work so there are times where people who may not have gotten along in life will get along and there are times where those you know whatever kind of relationship was had that carries on and that's that's not a good vibe so you have to separate them but in general as a rule of thumb if you have a, an altar that let's say is like for a taino practice but you are also doing your atr stuff or espiritismo whatever those two things or three things whatever they all need to be separated because they are different types of practice and that's something that's really really important so if you want to do your taino stuff that's over here and if you're doing spiritism they got to have their own space over there. And if you're doing Santeria stuff or, you know, you, you want to be a Babala or you what whatever it is, everybody got to have their own corner of the world. So you can't, you should not have one altar that's like, I'm going to do a catch -all. all of the things. So right. that, that's, that's really important aspect of um, ancestral veneration, separating those separate practices. Um, and but in terms of the colonization, you know, being nervous about, you know, honoring your Spanish ancestors and your African ancestors versus the Taino ancestors, because for the most part, that's what we're mostly mixed with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the truth of the matter is, you know, without these contributing elements, you wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't be who you are. And ancestral veneration is a timeless activity in that the actions that you do today affect the future generations, right? The legacies that you're going to leave behind, but it also retroactively affects the past. 
And so, it, you know, because you could be breaking karmic cycles, you could be breaking generational curses, you could be doing all kinds of stuff just with your actions every single day. And so with that said, you know, it's it's one of those things where acknowledging the totality of you is part of that process, part of that healing process. Um, but again, you know, no pressure, there's no push. Um, you just have to understand that it, exactly water vixen time isn't linear. And <clears throat> that acknowledgement is very much part of the veneration process. Yeah, that exactly time and healing are not linear. And that's, you know, that that goes both in the physical world and the spiritual world. And you made a very good point that in, engaging in in these practices are not only healing for ourselves and the whole process of reconnecting and acting as an anchor, but it's often healing for those ancestors as well, because they are getting love and and you know respect and being able to be called on and and you know do work so it is it is a very special relationship when you develop it yeah I think I think there's a difference you know there's something to be said about the difference rather um between you know uplifting and sending love and light and all of that to your ancestors and then actively working Mm -hmm. with an Esther, you oh, know, yeah. there's certain ones who's, you know, okay, maybe in life they were total assholes or whatever. You might still send them light after they've passed. But is that somebody you want to call on to protect you? Mm, I don't know. You know, <laughs> um, that's again where like that buzzword discernment kind of comes into play and why, you know, you want to call on ancestors that you are more familiar with starting out because you know, you know, which ancestor would probably come, you know, have your back. If somebody were to pick a fight with you in the real world, then they probably do the same in the afterlife for you. Um, But I thought it would be a good idea to um, also like kind of provide folks um, with a definition of like our semi, as far as um, you know, the difference between And somebody deemed an ancestral spirit, a.k.a. a semi, versus, um, you know, being of the dead, right? Because everybody who's passed away isn't necessarily um, kind of given that title in the afterlife, if that makes sense. So I don't know if you wanted to touch on that or dan- beat around the bush or dance around that a little bit. <laughs> Leilani is shaking her head and I, I think she's like thinking she's in my head because I'm sitting here like how do I <laughs> how do I do this? Um, but, you know what? The little A and the big A. You can leave it at that. That's a good that, that. You know, because like you were saying, you know, they 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 have a choice to come back and guide us. That is true. But that choice is also very much contingent on the life of these of these people. And so not everyone gets the big A for ancestor. Sometimes they're just a little A ancestor and you don't necessarily call on them or need to work with them, but they're there. Everyone's there. <laughs> so essentially what we're saying is that a semi would be the big A. Right. Yeah. That's how I, <laughs> you know, to kind because I, I essentially I was wanting to make sure they understood that, like, just because, you know, your grandpa passed away does not necessarily mean he is right. now. <laughs> I mean, I, and I, I will do it this way, that there is a difference between my mother, right? And who, you know, I had a very good relationship with and and her life versus my partner's grandfather who has made himself known to me. So I guess that's the best way that I can do that. I I can give a clear kind of understanding without all the details. Yeah. There there's a difference. Uh Yeah, I think that's mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, moving on to another topic then, Um, (laughs) we were talking about protocol, Um, that word came up a lot, and um, I figured that maybe talking about protocol as far as like approaching somebody 
Uh, because we did say you want to reach out to people in the community, right? You want to reach out to an elder. You want to reach out to people who know what they're talking about. But you don't want to just jump in their DMs and tell them your entire life story out of freaking nowhere. Guys, there is a protocol to how you want to not not there's not just protocol as far as ceremony. There's protocol when it comes to approaching a spiritual worker, um, you know, because they probably have their their shields up anyway but depending on what kind of energy you're coming with they might need to like double up on their armor and <laughs> stuff like that so would you guys um would you guys like to kind of maybe elaborate on how you would appreciate people approach you the majority of the time oh i think you can start with this one leilani <laughs> Um, you know, I, we, we were actually joking about this in the pre-live because I was saying how, like, I have, like, no boundaries. <laughs> and so, you know, and because I'm a spiritual person, I'm going to read your whole life. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the whole fucking thing. And I'm going to be so mad that I wasted 10 minutes of my time reading it. But like, it's, that's what we do. <laughs> um, but I think, I think overall, <clears throat> if I can talk just from my experience, right when I was a beginner and I was seeking out elders, because trust me, I had my ass handed to me sometimes based on, because sometimes you forget yourself. Sometimes you're so excited about something or you're like, and you just go in and plus you've had like a couple of conversations with them already. So you already think you're like besties and like you come <laughs> in hot. Um, but the reality is one of the, one of the things that I, I know for a fact is that if your elder has a title, call them by that title just because you know their first name doesn't mean you use their first name so definitely acknowledge the work that was put in to get those titles and call them that um like elba was saying you know the life story we could do without it you know what i mean let's not forget part of what we do is you know, assess and analyze your situation. So we're going to get a lot of that stuff revealed to us anyway. Like, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What else, Vixen? What else? <laughs> no, that's a really good one. And as far as um, also the thing with, with, with title, at least I will say, like, for me, and I believe um, Behike Running Cloud, who some people know, would be that always in ceremony, 100%, you will always refer to my title. And although for our community, I am also a, a sitting council member, my spiritual title technically supersedes my council title because it, it is it is a higher, a higher ranking. Um, and then that that's also like, yes, respect, like someone has done work in order to be like, referred to or to be recognized for these gifts it's important that you acknowledge it and remember that for each individual person like they may not want to have their title called all the time right so I don't I can't speak for like spiritism but I do know that some some people in our community will be a lot more like always use it some people are like only in like in ceremony I'm a lot more like the the first time you're approaching me I expect protocol and respect which is you acknowledging why if you're referring to me by that title that already alerts me that you're coming to me for a spiritual question or you you're you're seeking something and so you know that that's one thing and always be respectful like do you have a moment or I have a question about this and also know that not every spiritual person is knowledgeable about every spiritual thing and if they tell you they are turn around and walk away run turn around Back. and walk away Back. Walk, run <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah just coming in the dms just asking questions right off the bat or or asking for something right off the bat without introducing yourself without asking if you have time without just going right in yeah not a good look yeah you definitely i mean it's it's like with anything else you want to ask for consent um, you know, that person might not oh, be that's... in the space or have the time at that given moment. Like you may have caught them in between running an errand or something like you just, um, mm -hmm. we you have know. bad days too, people like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think another one, huh? What? Oh no, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I was just going to say, it was actually something that you had brought up, which was to, to come Sorry, pre- cat. What I, <laughs> to come prepared and not, not just oh, like, you- come prepared to get answers, but, you know, be prepared to answer some questions too. Granted, they th- somebody who's reading you shouldn't be answer- asking you questions that they can, like Leilani said, pick up on and, you know, whatever anyway, but um, right. I, Leilani, that was like, you know, people will come to me and they don't even know what they want. <laughs> like, yeah, I think, yeah, that's definitely, that's like, that's a good, yeah, I'm so glad you, you remembered that. I forgot that I said that. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, for real. I think, you know, if you want to become a student of a Bahike because you want to be a Bahike one day, you know what I mean? Like, you got to come prepared with at least the basic knowledge of what the semi are you know read the books read all the things and at least come prepared with the basic information because the truth of the matter is all of these titles that you encounter all of these elders that you ever meet up they worked really hard to get where they are and part of their work was memorizing shit learning shit and so like they they need to expect that you have that work ethic about you before they even meet you And so if you come in and you're not sure about this or you don't know what you want about that and you're just like, all I know is that I have these gifts and I think I would be an amazing Bahike, that's not going to cut it. And that's another thing, too, coming into the game because you have gifts. So that must mean the next logical step is to train to be a Bahike. And that's not the case. Water Vix, and you know what I'm talking about when they come to your team talking about I got this gift and I got this gift. <laughs> Can you teach me? <laughs> oh, I, Girl, say it again, please. So, this is something like I, I talk about a lot and I know I know Elba hears me say it a lot, has heard me say it a lot that re- in reality everybody has medicine. Everyone carry some type of medicine whether it's your ability to make someone laugh or you know to hold space or you cook meals that just you know make people feel so warm and fuzzy inside uh you know you're a really great nurturer you had an herbalist you know in your family and you can do all kinds of things everyone has some type of medicine but having a healing gift or having some type of medicine does not make you a healer because that is like equated to when people try to become nuns or priests and they're like I feel you know the calling I feel called to do it and then they go and I can't I'm in like you know from a different phase of my life people I knew who went to you know want to be priests and want to be nuns and gave up everything and then realized like years in that wasn't my calling. Like, I just really love God. And like, I, I'm like, you know, I'm down with the JC crew and I wanted to do all of this, but it, you know, it wasn't for them. And and it's kind of the same thing that a lot of us are, are born into things and we we're you know, whatever way our whole lives, we don't just wake up one day and, and, you know, that's a whole other conversation, but, but yeah, <laughs> that much to say that just because you have a healing ability or you mess with tarot cards or you mess with Oracle cards or I don't know, what's another popular thing that people like to do? Reiki and I, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not, they're not, they don't make you, uh, you know, Reiki certified. Reiki's like legit and certified. But, you know, Leilani and I, well, I can't speak for Leilani, but people in our circles can do energy work, but we're not certified to do Reiki, but it doesn't make our energy work any less valid. This is like stuff that's passed down to us and all of that. And there are things that we can do, you know, and, you know, like uh, we've, we even talked about like people having the ability to transmute emotions or to take in and store it into something else. And not everybody can do those things, you know? So like it, it it's that word discernment is going to come in into this because that applies to you and yourself too. And knowing and understanding that you may have an ability, but you don't, you're not a healer because healing work okay. comes with a lot of stuff like everyone thinks it's cool I want to do it I want to have a title I want no you don't no. once you know what it really entails <laughs> my thing is like 
it's kind of a sign to me that if you're like really eager to want to jump into it, that means you haven't really done your due diligence because anybody who's, who's paid enough attention knows that there's so much responsibility. There's so much energy that goes into it and everything that like, you know, it, it's a matter of like, just because you can, doesn't mean you should everybody. It's not for everybody. Period. Yeah. Blank. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's not this glorious thing or whatever. People, people get sick taking on other stuff, healing mm-hmm. and muting things and all this stuff. It is not mm-hmm. for people. And it is not something, you know, um, to be, to be glorified, respected. Yes. You know, acknowledged and, and you know what I mean? Showed gratitude for absolutely. But, um, no, like, (laughs) what what really goes into it? Like you shouldn't, you, you shouldn't be as gung ho to jump in. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa, there's a lot more to this than I thought. Let me slow down, you know? Right. Right. And I think, you know, regarding ancestral veneration, right, when you're when you're seeking out an elder uh, to learn protocol and to and to help with ceremony and to help understand who the semi are and, and, and all that. Also understand that you you need discernment for the elders, too. Um, you know, it, the discernment goes both ways. You know, it really does. You know, you're interviewing them. They're interviewing you. It's 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 you're building a relationship. And this relationship will eventually lead down some road. And 99.9% of the time, it leads to someone just not showing up or, you know, getting bored and leaving, things like that. Um, but the but the piece that I kind of wanted to bring to your attention is at the end of the day, though, despite whatever, what any tradition that you are in, any culture that you're in, I want you to look at this as a general statement. No one can tell you about your ancestors, but you and the ancestors. So like, you know, there's, there's something to be said that there are cultural practices. There are traditional practices. There are religious practices. There are ways in which you can connect and ways in which you can, you know, facilitate space, sacred space for them. But at the end of the day, your bloodline is yours and no one no one can dictate that or say, oh, I have a message from your ancestors and they, you know, bitch, let them tell me, let them tell me. Exactly. <laughs> you don't need to be talking for them. Not, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Y'all let me know if it's the same for you guys, but I've gone to people to get read and they're like, yo, your, your ancestors refused to talk to me. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. they said the fuck not uh, mm-hmm. that I, on somewhere and i'm like okay well never mind i guess <laughs> like you Yo, know they- you know who's like that this is like every single every single time i read a middle eastern person every single time that 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 culture got that shit locked down they don't talk to me they refuse to talk as a matter of fact i tried one time to push a conversation so hard i was holding a crystal in my hand the thing broke like it snapped right in my hand and i was i had a flat hand it snapped right in my hand when i was trying to press it i was like you know what this never conversation mind. is over never mind <laughs> they said they said absolutely the fuck not no i mean yeah for this reading because no <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i mean and and some of that too I, I will just say that some of that too is there are there are people I've worked with who are deeply deeply um, protected uh, who in my journey are people that I've developed relationships with and because I've developed that relationship their ancestors have made themselves known to me so that is also something that can happen and that's why I mentioned uh, my partner's grandfather Um you know, because sometimes they will make themselves known to you for for whatever reason. So that's also, you know, something to to take into consideration. But exactly what Leilani said, nobody like, even if I'm working with somebody, depending on what it is, I have to like, and this goes into something Elba touched on earlier. If you're working with someone and they approach you, just just walk away. Mm -hmm. 
Because unless like you're in community and we're having a whole conversation and in the conversation, my spidey sense goes off and I kind of like, I may be having a conversation with you, but let's say it's about your emotional state. It's not really about anything, whatever. But in doing that, you open up and you start guiding the conversation. That's a very different thing than if I go to you and I'm like, your ancestors told me to tell you this, or what is this thing? Or, or, you know, I'm jumping on you because really the protocol for that is that you always have to give us permission yeah, in yeah. some form, either like blatantly saying it or saying, I have a question or, or something you need to be initiating that request and doing that. And if you are working with, and this rolls into what Leilani said about discernment for elders, if you are, going to someone and there is no kind of like relationship you know, relationship or or this is not established that you have permission because you continuously like engage with each other you know and even still like there could be people like uh you know I'm, I, I don't know if he's in here or not but I'm just gonna like put him on the spot if he's listening my partner is someone who will like come to me to ask for things but he can be he's very strong personality and you know because I know how he is I'll be like you have to like I won't do anything until you actually literally say to me I have your permission <laughs> and then you know like, oh the door is open explicitly <laughs> right. right like nobody nobody anywhere is changing like coming coming for me changing it up because you know, whatever. Right. And so, and, there, I think, and I think that that's part of, that's part of when you're seeking a reader or when you're yeah. seeking an elder to, to do that for you, for sure. I meant like, if like you run into an elder and like their whole thing is only I can get the messages. Oh from yeah, you no, that's, that's like, oh, no like no one else. Cause I've seen that. I've seen where, you know, there's like this, this feeling of like wanting to control the environment. And so it's like, I'm the only channel in which these spirits will come through. And it's like, uh, it's you know, I mean? now that's bullshit because <laughs> your ancestors speak to you in a variety of ways. You just have to be willing to listen and it's not going to be, um, you, you know, it's a, I, I shared a story about a way in which, you know, w with everybody about a way in which my mother ha communicates with me now that she's now that she's no longer here and that's different for for everybody you just have to be willing to listen so and and it's not and that's why we tell you to go for a walk you know <laughs> and spend time in nature <laughs> the only thing i will say about that is that if you come to us and you're saying like hey there's this thing and I don't know if it is actually this thing. And you're asking us a question about whether or not this could be that person or if this could be interpreted that way. That's opening the door for a different kind of conversation. And, you know, but like for us to, to like blatantly just be like, you know, what, like, you know, we're the, the only source of, no, because it was never that way. And anybody who tells you that it was that way, they like, they're full of shit. Yeah, I think it's important to note these things, you know, as far as like if they if they act like they know all the things, if they um, act like they're the only like vehicle or, or they're the only communication, the way for you to communicate with your ancestors, um, they're all definitely red flags. Um, and unfortunately, there are just like with any community, there are people that are predatory and will use spirituality as a way to gain proximity and closeness to people who have power or have authority or even so even on the flip end who are vulnerable um and and who they can easily i guess latch on to for lack of a better way to put it so um again discernment is is incredibly important and that's why coming into community is paramount because then you know who the people are through conversations with other people that you want to get to, that you want to reach out to and you want to have a conversation with and who the people who are running around with Bejica and their name on Facebook, but they're a whole ass fraud and you don't want to go, you don't want to give them any of your time or energy, you know? Um, yeah. So I'm really glad that you brought up community because another thing about you know, indig our indigenous practices, and, and speaking specifically of ancestral veneration, right, that is a very personal 
you know, practice. It's, it's very much a solitary practice in that, you know, you're doing this at home in your space and, and, you know, but overall, when we're talking about spiritual practices, then I'm sure, and I'm sure water vixen can testify to this in terms of like in Taino culture, it's, it's really, our practices are contingent. They're very heavily done in communal spaces and with community, you know, like when Elba was saying, you know, seeking out community so you can learn that's, she's not just saying that so that you can just hang out with us while you're reconnecting, which you should be doing. Sure. But more because what we do is communal. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and incorporating that into your practice Mm -hmm. and being okay. Like it's like, it's, it's okay to be an introvert and be shy and things like that. But like, this is part of that, that process, you know, to be around other people and be okay Mm -hmm. with that. (laughs) I I kind of explain it as, well, I mean, I always say that being indigenous practice and indigenous culture, and it's not just like Taino indigenous, I mean, all indigenous cultures, we're talking about like African, you know, countries, cultures, tribes, uh, you know, all of that, that's indigenous people, you know, all of it is very, very community based. And, you know, that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child is is an African proverb, all of those kinds of, you know, concepts come come from there. And if you just look at anywhere in the Caribbean, Caribbean, West Indies, or whatever, and people gather, nobody goes hungry. You show up to anyone's house, somebody's feeding you, somebody's handing you a plate. Don't you walk in someone's house and refuse food because we're going to look <laughs> at you like something is wrong with you. Um, you know, but all you of those. Not? Exactly. Like it's you better have a cup of water. You better pretend you're going to eat that food, something. But like he's, we will look at you for nobody to eat it. I don't think so. So <laughs> but like, you know, it's all very community community centered in that way and we all have stories about like you know we someone's got a a grandmother or aunt you know I I had the the grandmother who was like you know a great cook and everybody was always showing up like at the door like was she cooking yeah and there was a line (laughs) of people out the door and everybody getting mad like why are all these people at my house but she just kept feeding them you know (laughs) and it's and it's It's but it's it's that it's that mindset of, of like that's you know, community is not just like if you think about like your congregation or whatever. It's this is a community right here. We've made a community. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think that's definitely the way you put it. It's not a congregation. That's definitely a way to kind of suss out if a spiritual leader is a legit behike or if they're just, you know, um, a Christian in Taino clothing for for uh to put it more, you know, paint it pretty or whatever. Um, yeah. But I to, like circle back to um, something that you said, and it was that, you know, you were talking about like all indigenous practices because, you know, our African and, and Taino ancestors, you know, indigenous to Africa, indigenous to the Americas got along so well and have so many similarities in their practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's why there's this like um, amalgamation of different practices or whatever that you see happening in the Caribbean Um, And I think because of that, there is a bad habit for um, there to kind of be treating uh, ancestral veneration as as a monolith and mistaking entities like being like, oh, well, Atabe is a water ancestor and Oshun is also associated with the. So they're just the same entity, but, you know, different names from different culture. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're, We're disrespecting both of them now cut it out you know I think that really important to um to kind of shed light on um because I've seen it be a consistent issue especially if you're like on witch talk oh lord oh my god I'm gonna elaborate on that yes and you see it you see it a lot when it comes to the altar setups you know you'll see just this conflation of like you know taino stuff espiritismo stuff atr stuff uh and then you throw in hecate at the top there and it just becomes like this whole thing and you're like what is this you know oh yeah so not only are we not a monolith from an indigenous perspective but um 
ATRs is not a monolith from an African perspective either. So let's get that also like out on the table. And I'm not going to speak for Africans, but I will say like, if you confuse uh, 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 with Santeria, you're going to have a problem, right? So same thing with, same thing with the indigenous traditions, you know, it, we don't make dream catchers. We don't do that. And say it again. Like, I it for telling we don't, people. we don't do that. So for you to come to, you know, to our practices and do ancestral worship or do whatever, and you have all of these elements of quote unquote indigenous paraphernalia and all this other stuff and you're just conflate you're just throwing it all together that's no and again why you seek an elder why you seek someone who has the information for you you know keeping these things separate is not only respectful to the culture and the spirituality but it's also a safety precaution it's a safety precaution these spirits are not to be fucked with mm-hmm. so like you know what I'm saying? We're talking about raw, primal energies that will rock your life. And if you are doing this the wrong way, you know what I mean? Cultural yeah. appropriation is real on which talk word. No, I just, I, I'm, I'm laughing over here to myself because it, it just reminds me of the thing with the singing bowl. Uh <clears throat> <laughs> What happened with the singing bowl? <laughs> like everybody has a singing bowl and people like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They like pull it out and I I I think uh, we haven't we both talked about like someone we're not going to name names in the community who like tried to pull it out in a ceremony. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's been it's it's happened more than once where somebody Yeah. Somebody is just like, okay, I get it that you're an eclectic, you know, baddie, but, um, you know, it's like, okay. And there's something to be said about, it's something to be said about mixing too, because like, if I was interacting and, you know, getting to know some Cherokee folks and then they gifted me, um, how to dance like a jingle or whatever. Right. I would not be wearing Taino regalia while I do that. Yeah. I would respecting their culture and doing it their way with the appropriate attire and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not so much like keep things separate because, you know, no way, obviously these cultures can come together because we exist, you know, it's kind of like because spirituality and science, the line there is so blurred, at least in my opinion, I would liken it to like chemistry, right? If you don't know how certain chemicals are, if you just throw a whole bunch together and be like, ooh, look at that, you're going to eventually cause an explosion and fuck yourself up and everything around you. And it's the same way when the spirituality, I would say certain things are done the way that they're done for a reason. You know, certain things attract certain ways and certain things you don't, they just, it's not going to be a good look. And I think another thing too, you know, it's, it's one thing to, to say, okay, you know, for the sake of respect, for safety, for all the reasons that we just listed, this is why we should keep things separate. But we should also understand too, that those differences, again, to bring it full circle, is what made you who you are. And those differences can coexist together. They're the reason why we have the music that we have. They're the reason why we have the food that we have. There's the reason, like all of it, obviously, we've created new things because of it. And that's amazing. Again, we're talking about evolution and we're talking about growth as a as a culture, right? So it's important to acknowledge those differences and, and pay respects within those, I mean, keeping them separate is not about segregation. It's about respecting Uh the differences Mm -hmm. and putting them where they deserve to be, you know, Mm -hmm. and that is in an elevated place. And sometimes that space isn't for us. Same Mm -hmm. thing. Like our shit isn't for you, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? to like when you have siblings right you know just because your dna is like literally nobody else on this planet has more similar dna to me than my sister 
but we are still different people and we move in this world slightly differently. So we mm-hmm. need to, we deserve to be acknowledged as individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with our spiritual practices mm-hmm. and however, however you connect with them best, because, you know, I do also believe there's something to be said when it comes to accessibility, because some people don't have Taino that they can be physically in community with. Um, a lot of the times that's when you see people kind of crossing over into uh, the ATRs, right? And so there might be um, a bunch of Santeros in their area. So they turn to Santeria because that is what is accessible and easiest for them to be able to uh, work with their ancestors and connect mm-hmm. with their ancestors, venerate them and all of mm-hmm. that. Because I've also noticed in the Taino community, there's this like, you know, um, there's a sect of folks that are very like Taino purists and they kind of project that not just with regard to blood quantum, but with regard to how you practice your practice your spirituality as well. Mm-hmm. And that if you were to, because, you know, let's say in my area, there's a lot of um, paleros. So if I were to go about connecting with my ancestors via palo, then they would frown upon me and they would say, oh, I've betrayed my ancestors and whatever, whatever, yada, yada, bullshit. So um, I just wanted to bring up that should that be somebody's circumstance that I personally, and I can't speak to, you know, um, what Kay would say or what, um, I'm sorry, did you say we could say your name or do you want, do you want yeah, to? Yeah, you could say my name, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, I had a brain fart <laughs> I, I totally forgot. Um, but yeah, you guys can, can speak to it. However, um, you know, share your opinion should you want to, but in my opinion, like however you connect to your ancestors, that is your personal, you know, journey, your personal path. So nobody should be, you know, making you feel lesser than because you're not going about it the way that they go about connecting with their ancestors. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, as I said, personal ceremony, and yeah. there, there is, a, you know, and there's a reason for saying that it is very different. And ultimately, for me, and and um, and I think anyone who has been doing this long enough, or you know, works with guiding people, ultimately, the thing is to be grounded in whatever spirituality. It's about being grounded in the practice and the consistency in which you are engaging in that practice in order to build up the relationships with your ancestors and then to continue to grow uh, your practice. Exactly. Because ancestor veneration doesn't have to be connected to anything. That can, It's its own separate mm-hmm. practice. Um, it mm-hmm. just so happens that literally every culture in the world has an obsession with ancestral stuff Mm -hmm. because uh let's be real you know think about our ancient 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 way back when when the first motherfucker died and someone saw that and was like holy shit one minute he was warm and the next minute he's cold what is this all about you know what i mean like and you get the cult of death you get this curiosity about death and about where our our people go so it's this practice is as old as time and it's not connected to anything so Mm -hmm. if you happen to be in a religion that you know has their way of connecting with ancestors and then do your thing Mm -hmm. do your thing i mean and to that point if you what do you think it is that you do when you go to a a, what do you think a freaking cemetery is what (laughs) <laughs> and when you go and you send flowers on the anniversary of of somebody's death or if you hold a memorial or anything like what do you think all of that is where do you think it comes from exactly even the thing so many of the practices and things well you know i'm not even gonna get too deep into that whole thing but uh but so many practices and things that are documented you know like in the bible or other spiritual texts read between the lines that there's ancestral veneration and other types of practices like you know woven in there there's just that it's easy for someone to demonize something because it doesn't look the way that they feel like it should look yeah and i mean there's also a lot of uh similarities with regard to i would say like practices 
that you see in the Caribbean. Um, and, and differences, you know, like if you go outside of the Caribbean, that same practice looks totally different, you know, because of the fact that like our Spanish, right? We sound different because we, taino, we Tainoized our, the, the way we speak Spanish. And in the Caribbean, I feel like we did that with our spiritualities as well. So like, you know, you might see hoodoo, voodoo, um, santeria, whatever practiced in the Caribbean, totally different than outside of the Caribbean. Um, and I know that's another reason why um, if you do end up practicing like santeria, spiritismo, whatever, um, depending on who, who you're learning it through, you're going to get Taino practice in there, whether you realize it or not, whether it's recognized as such or not. Same with regard to like when you're learning Caribbean history and how certain things are attributed to the Spanish that weren't the Spanish. It was, you know, it was our African ancestors that did it or Taino ancestors instrument, you know, not, not theirs. And all of these things have been conflated. Um, I think that just kind of like ties right back to why it's important to not necessarily keep things separate, but recognize the difference between things. Like differences aren't necessarily bad. The colonizers made it that way because they wanted to treat people like shit because of the differences, but right. we're not doing it. So, yeah. Love it. Yes. <laughs> I agree. So I, I'm, I'm about to like, I'm getting attached to things. I was just looking at the notes trying to, see where else we were i, I think know. there was some stuff in terms of like what i think it's like what makes it different no no, no. what are some things that mm, i forgot damn <laughs> no differences that uh we're gonna that i wrote down as well um because like with language and you know all of that there's even within the caribbean things are practiced differently depending on where you are. I don't know if there's, I think we kind of taught, I think I want to say we touched on. Well, cause I was just looking on the other stuff where we were talking about like, uh, dabbling, which I think we, we talked about like has come up consistently kind of a little bit yeah. throughout this. Mm -hmm. Um, now I was looking at like uh, traditional gifts. Oh, uh, the offerings. Yeah, or 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 not both, both <laughs> offerings and like gifts for for like people who work with like requesting to work with a spiritual both, person, like exchange of energy, exchange and reciprocity, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's important to talk about because we did touch on, you know, approaching elders because obviously you want to get into community and that's who you want to talk to. Um, but yeah, because there's definitely people that like want to be Bejique because they have a gift. I think we already touched on that, though. Where just yeah. Does not it mean you're, you, you know, this is your path as far as being a, a leader or healer or whatever? Um, oh, I actually thought you meant like gift, like uh, buying them a gift. Um, no, I do. I yeah, that's yeah. What I'm so I don't. I don't really know how it's done in um, uh, Taino spiritual practice, but I know um, in Espiritismo and a lot of the other Caribbean practices, whoever the elder is that you are seeking um, knowledge from. Or if you're even working under them, because it usually is a nice protocol to do it every single time you meet up with this person. Um, what you would find out is who their spirit guide is, who their their main, who their crown is, who their main spirit guide is, whoever. And you would um, give the gift of whatever that spirit normally takes and normally likes. You know, so if someone you know, adheres to Archangel Michael or if someone is crowned Oshun, you know, there are certain things that are attributed to them. And so you would bring that as a gift to that elder every time you meet them um, before partaking in any activities. Um, and I think in terms of offerings to the ancestors, 
again, you know, depending on which ancestors we're talking about, right? Water vixen, because we've had we have the big A and the little A, right? Um, my my biggest advice to you is this: you treat spirits for the most part the same in terms of offerings, in that spirit requires energy to interact with this physical world, right? So if you are seeking to anchor them down and bring them down into your sacred space and commune with them, you have to give them some kind of energy or something to allow that energy to pass, right? In some cultures, it's a sacrifice. In other cultures, it's food. In other cultures, it might be, um, you know, certain flowers or, you know, fruit, rocks, whatever, or a live plant, right? So my point is, is that these offerings don't have to be crazy elaborate. You just have to follow the protocol of your particular tradition. Um, and if they don't have a protocol, you simply offer um, an essence, life essence. So like a plant or fresh flowers. Sorry, I've got a, I've got a fur baby that's like planted herself here and I was trying to <laughs> see the thing. Yes, 100% like offerings don't have to be elaborate. And if we're going to talk about ancestral veneration from the perspective of like our immediate bloodline family, mm. give them things that they liked in real life. They like to eat cake. Put a piece of cake. Yep. Give them cop drink. Give, give them some water. You get thirsty. Like it's 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 you know that's the thing, and and it doesn't have to be a lot. You don't need ten pieces of cake or like a whole you know whatever. It could be mm -hmm. the smallest thing because again, so much of these spiritual practices are about energy and intention. Your intention, not the amount not you know the grandiosity of anything because you know even in in real life what means more to you someone who has everything that gives you something or someone who has very little and is going out of their way to share with you like that that's where the value is in that yes. and that's about your your true intention and um all of that but i just wanted to there was something in the comments um, someone said like plants under Akabe. So within Taino culture and spirituality, no one is like under or, you know, crowned or anything in our spirituality that that doesn't exist in Taino spirituality. And so the, there are things that can be discussed more in depth that I won't um, do here, but <laughs> just, just for that reference, we don't, we don't operate um Taino spirituality does not operate from that um, particular perspective. And as no. far, I'm sorry, I didn't know who, who, was, who was talking. No. Oh, it was me. I'm sorry. I was just adding that it's not hierarchical. Yes. Yes. Thank you. No, because I heard you come in and I was like, oh, crap, let me stop talking. But I couldn't figure out who because then like storms like you can't see her on the camera, but then she keeps like popping up and then like covering the chat and then like other things. So your camera's off and then I couldn't see if Leilani's mouth moved and I'm like, damn cat. Uh, <laughs> uh, gifts for he here we go again. Hold on. There, now she's moving. Okay. Storm's gifts. Being she's being Storm. For the ancestors. Uh, she's, listen, she's, she's the whole thing. She's a very, she's a very good guardian. That I will give her. Um, but she's, she's a pain in the neck sometimes. So, uh, payment for services. So I'm trying to figure out how <laughs> to way to go, go with this. Cause I know, I think it did, it did, it came up earlier too. Um, there's nothing wrong with people asking for money for, for services for the, for, the community that I service, my actual community that, that I, I belong to, I would not charge them, right? But there is still exchange of energy and there's reciprocity and that is really 
really important across all things that there there is reciprocity for any work that is done for you anything that you seek out and that's you know time being exchanged energy being exchanged if there's an exchange of money if there's an exchange of what someone would call a traditional gift which would be some type of like medicine or um not like robitussin i hope y'all know what i'm talking about <laughs> Like, tobacco, you guys, yeah. tobacco with stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, those kinds of things or food, making someone a, a meal that they would like, things like that. Those are, are considered more in line with like traditional gifts. But that also doesn't mean that we would not, um, you know, I'm talking about like from a Taino you know, perspective of like taking money and, and all of that. Cause I do do things outside of what I do for my community. Um, and then, you know, but like people who are in my community, I'm obviously, I'm not charging them. That would not be okay. <laughs> cause I, cause I took up the position to, to service them, to be there, to caretake them. So it's, it's different in in that sense, but uh, reciprocity and exchanging of energy, anytime you interact, not just with anyone who you're seeking guidance from, but anyone in general, the act of reciprocity is deeply, deeply um, important to keep things going. And it goes with your ancestors too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you want to, you guys want to like go ahead and, and, and plug your spiritual services real quick? Cause I wanted to, do that and then go into the conversation, like elaborate more on the topic of, you know, all Bejique, um don't necessarily offer the same kind of spiritual guidance and healing and stuff like that. But real quick, plug, plug your, plug yourselves. I well, know Le Leilani can go first. <laughs> well, um, I'm still a reconnecting Taino. Um, I come from, you know, the, the Puerto Rican background um, so my my spiritual practices are very much aligned with espiritismo, spiritism. Um, I have a small business called The Magical Solution. That's what the screen name is, um, where I offer spiritual, you know, services, healings, you know, uh, divinations, and of course, classes and workshops. So uh, right now, the next class um, starts on the 18th, which is this Friday, actually. Um, and it's for a spiritism intensive. So pretty much all this stuff that we're talking about, working with ancestors, working with spirits, um, you know, understanding how to develop your gifts so that you can work with these energies and all that good stuff. Um, that's happening starting this Friday. So if you guys need to get a hold of me, this is a great you can find me on all social media at The Magical Solution um, or my website, TheMagicalSolution.com. Yay. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Elba, you were going to talk. No, I, I was just saying, A, hey, uh, <laughs> the background. <laughs> um, and then, like, uh, from a Taino perspective, so this starts to get a little, a little tricky. So in reference to what I said earlier is that there are there are some people who are Bejike Bohuti, whichever, you know, they're kind of synonymous, synonymous terms, but um, not everyone who like plant medicine is not my strong suit. And that's, that's okay. That's not my strong suit. I am someone who deals a lot more with energy and, and spiritual things. Um, some some herbal things uh i have a background in actual medical stuff so sometimes that that comes up and that that plays a role in what i'm able to do i also often talk about how i have a very interesting relationship with recently passed people i don't always like to say dead because that's a very uh broad spectrum of understanding of things but you know i do card work i do divinations i do things with with energy work, I I do a, a wide variety of things. And then there are things that I do that are very specific and catered to things that I would do for people in my community or um, 
in the larger Taino community, there are some people who are newer and reconnecting who I have offered something like a crossing ceremony to because I know that they're disconnected from community. And I believe very deeply that anyone of our ancestors that passes on, if we are reconnecting, they should not be withheld prayer because the person doesn't have community. Because, you know, that that's my responsibility to caretake. My obligation is not to only to the people of the community that that I've um, offered and stepped up to caretake, but to the people at large. My obligation is is to them. Um, but I actually, before we went on live, I linked my Instagram to my TikTok. So Hello. that's there. I I I'm terrible on social media, mostly because I have a very very busy life. Like I work a full time job. I'm a full time single parent to a special, um, well not really special needs, more neurodiverse, uh, autistic person. So my life is very very chaotic. So I suck with uh social media. But if you reach out to me, I I do I do respond. And the things that I do. Um, there I'm pulling the divine or more or less the same things that I would do for my community but less with the Taino edge and probably more with the general like spiritual flair I guess, I guess is what I'm gonna say but um yeah I I mean if people have questions you can um, reach out to me but as I said and you know shared there are certain things that I will for sure not not I don't share everything with everybody and um if you are a member of my community I will definitely give you more but then with all things anyone who is doing work or trying to teach someone we also have to follow your lead and what you know and what you do and um you know that that's really critically important too so if someone isn't giving you all the answers you want right away there's probably a reason for that uh that that that's what I've got. I'm gonna shut up because I keep talking. <laughs> no, but you're right, and I feel like that kind of um, is a good segue into something else that we talked about, which was, you know, um, when you do reach somebody and you do have their consent for their time and energy, and they sit down and they have this whole hour long conversation with you, plus or minus thirty minutes or whatever the going rate is these days. Um. It is then on you to, you know, follow the counsel, you know, yeah. it's like going to the doctor, finding out that you have um, a, a, some kind of illness, you're put on antibiotics, and then you don't finish the antibiotics, and you end up getting sick again. And then you run back to the doctor, and it's like, okay, um, you know, even though you are paying in some, in some cases, for somebody's services, for their counsel, for their advice, their wisdom, whatever, doesn't mean it's okay to, you know, be out here reckless and consistently ignoring the spiritual diagnosis, prescri prescription, or whatever that you are dealt, you know? I like, um, I like to ache in it to, do you remember, do you remember the, the term um, armchair Bruja or armchair spiritualist armchair, or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, because it comes from armchair expert. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's I kind of aching it to that, you know, and it's this it's this concept where, you know, you can read all the books and learn all the things and listen to all the YouTube, but if you don't put it into practice, you're just an armchair observer, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with getting a reading. Like, first of all, when you're coming to someone for spiritual matters, or even not, but but you're coming to a spiritual person who's most likely going to answer it in a spiritual way, even if you're coming for a mundane problem, um, you have to understand that spiritual stuff is work. It's it's work from the minute you decide to seek help to after way after and the reason why is because nothing nothing happens overnight like spirit stuff does not happen instantaneously it requires like uh water vixen have said it requires intent it requires action it requires a lot and the only piece you were missing was a direction or maybe a, a or maybe you know some positive 
you know, a positive push or maybe a warning. You were you were seeking us to sort of validate something or to inform you of something. And either way, it's going to come with homework. It's going to come with what we call a prescription. And that prescription is intended to assist you in in solving whatever problem you have, um, in addition to also giving you the wisdom that you came to seek. So, you know, it's again, it's one of those things where it's like, well, if you just came to get the wisdom and then not do anything about it, then that's on you. But like, don't come back to me with the same problem. I already gave you the answer, you know? That's facts on facts. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's I mean like we're we're laughing about it but like in all in like really very seriousness people can get themselves into some situations and you know I have dealt with things that you know I'm not trying to be dramatic when I make this statement but like akin to something you would see in a movie you know that, that and and you know it's Same. real it's real yep. and people are scared and and you know they can come to you and you're you're advising them and you're you there are things that you have to do and you're trying to help and you give someone advice and then you know in that moment they like you know yes it's yes this is everything I need and then you check in on them no I haven't done it yet I was too busy I was this that I was that I was the other thing like you were so busy you didn't do the thing to fix the problem and just because there's like a break or a pause or whatever it doesn't mean that it is over and I think that it's something that um you know if we're gonna go like on the deep end of like where things can go really really bad and where this is so critically important because there's a difference between like I did a reading and they're like stop your bullshit and like you know whatever there's a big difference between that versus like real like you need to like do a major olympia you need to be doing a bath like three four times a week you need to like you know hunker down and have all kinds of protections and do you know xyz abc search your home for something that someone may have left there like those are very different um situations but in those situations to not follow the prescription as leilani said that's given to you that's advice to you if we're like look in your home there's something there we may not know what it is but we know that there's something and you mm -hmm. choose to ignore that things will get worse there are a lot of spiritual things can manifest in the physical world and it's important to remember that we are spiritual beings having a physical existence and those things do overlap and cross over so please if someone gives you direction on something to do please like follow the instruction because if things get worse it could be out of our hands and that's that's very serious like we are not designed to continuously put band-aids on things so if you don't do the first step of what you were told to do th there may be no more because yeah. everybody's like yeah, and, and you notice that it's like they it's a, a lot of people want you to do it for them. Yeah. You know, and I and in some cases that's fine. You know what I mean? Oh, um, you know, I'm a, I'm I'm not used to saying this prayer or doing this thing. Okay, you know, we'll work something out, whatever. But when it's like you were saying, a prescription that you must do, um we can't hold your hand the entire time. You know, we tell you what it is. Some of us write it all down for you. There might be a scribe that writes it all down or whatever, mm -hmm. but we can't do it for you all the time. That's a whole, <laughs> that's extra. <laughs> and, 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 and it's, we like literally may not even be able to because right. the, like, the, like, I mean, that's going into a whole different direction, but just like your energy sometimes has to be involved in things. And like, we, we can't manufacture that that element of <laughs> of it so that that's to say like very seriously behike spiritist whatever kind of spiritual person you approach and work with if they are giving you advice on how to resolve an issue you are having please take it seriously because there is nothing worse than you approaching us and we are giving you our energy and mm -hmm. that is work 
And please understand also to, um, you know, to add on to that, um, prescriptions expire. Yes. Um, so, you know, there is a certain urgency, like when they tell you to do something for, for the next three days or seven days or whatever, that means like go home and start, start working on it right away. Because if you delay that process, every action and everything that you do spiritually or whatever, now the circumstances have changed. We, we need to start from the beginning and figure out what's going on or like, or like water vixen said, things could get worse. And like I said, I'm not trying to like scare everybody with like <laughs> anything, but it's, but it's very much like there's such a wide spectrum. And if we're talking like worst case scenarios for things, like that's when it is supremely, like extremely, extremely important. And that's just, you know, I mean, you're right. You're not trying to scare no one. I think the main point to drive home, like you were saying, is just, you know, if you're working under a bahike, if you're working under someone, if you're trying to learn certain things, follow the protocol, follow the prescription. But I think overall, when you're talking about like ancestral veneration, you know, understand that like your ancestors or at least the ones that you should be instructed to to reach out to, which is the ones that are, that have your best interests at heart, hopefully, um, it won't, won't hurt you. That's not, that won't be something that you have to worry about. And if anything, there'll be an extra layer of protection. Mm -hmm. However, it brings the it brings everything back full circle because the word discernment comes up again. And Water Vixen talked about it before, too. You have energies that don't mind popping in, pretending to be an ancestor, pretending to, you know, get in the way. And if you don't have that discernment, things can get weird. All of a sudden, you know, your little jar of water gets really dirty or, you know, the plants that you leave on your space gets, you know, dies. You're like, what's going on? Um, so that's what we mean about like following prescription and understanding that like, even within the ancestral realm, the worst case scenario is your discernment was not on game. And so a pest somehow managed to get through the lines, you know, and then that's something again, you know, you go to your Bahike for they, they tell you what to do and it's all good. I don't know if I was still there. Oh, I'm still here. I'm just listening. I'm listening <laughs> to the wisdom of ladies in, in the box. <laughs> no, but like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's just, it, it's like, I don't know, like I'm having all these like <laughs> flashes and memories of things because, you know, it, it, it can be, um, it can be, it can it suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was not getting a word and I was like uh, I don't know <laughs> that's it that's what I got I've been up since five this morning I was like that that's the word <laughs> yeah but I think it's it, it boils down to respect too because like if if you're going to go out of your way to seek guidance and get all this information or whatever and then not follow the prescription then it's it's like you're saying you don't even believe that that's gonna fix mm -hmm. the, problem, the problem, whatever. So then why why even waste your time and the other person's in in doing all of this to just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's why I mentioned that like a lot of the students that end up coming our way, you know, more than half end up disappearing about a third of the way through because once they realize just how much work goes into all of this, um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a good way to clean it, clean house. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like I, you know, like I've said that I've had people approach me, like, I want to know all the things, anything you want to teach me. I want to know, like, first of all, I don't want to tell you anything because <laughs> if, I, if I wanted to tell you something, I would have had a conversation with you and it would have come up organically but you're you're over here talking to me and like i want to know all the things no, i don't want to tell you anything like what because the, the person that that approaches like that i mean i understand approaching enthusiastically i think that's differently than being like you know i want to be i want to become a behike tell me all the things because you know like in the back of their mind they're like i'm going to post this on instagram mm -hmm. and i'm gonna make a whole app 
social thing, but spirit, and they're gonna come up with all kinds of crazy shit. And you're just like, that is that is not what these teachings are for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so freaking wild. I, I was, you know, we were talking about this a couple months back. It's this idea of like spiritual tourism. You know, like they they come in to sort of have an experience, get a couple of sound bites. Or, you know, get a couple of, of tips that they can put in their new book. Um, you have no idea how much shit was stolen from me and other and people have published them in their books and stuff. And I was like, whoa, what? So it just it, it just goes to show that, like, there, there needs to be a vetting process. And so that's a, another huge reason why, you know, we ask you a lot of questions. We put you through a lot of tests. We keep things secret. There are, th you know, just to see, like, can you, will you stick around? Will you stick around respectfully? Do you have discernment? Do you have this, this concept of privacy and boundaries and secrecy? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have maturity both emotionally and mentally? You know, all, all those things mm -hmm. matter. A hundred, a hundred percent. And I think, uh, for me, from my perspective, part of it too, with safeguarding things and, you know, gatekeeping on, on, you know, on a level is because of the fact that specifically for our people, almost everything that we know about ourselves is written from a colonized lens is written by a chronicler, you know, and, um, that is, you know, sad in many ways. Yeah you know, and trying to reconnect and gain, you know, gain knowledge where we can and piecing together what families kept and, and, you know, trying to, to figure that all out. Um, you don't want to very openly, uh, give any, any knowledge away to people who haven't earned the right to know that because okay. it is, it's just really not fair. <laughs> like, you know, for, for lack of, you know, making it complex, it can be really unfair because there was no exchange. It was no reciprocity. We're doing all of this work and, you know, trying to figure things out and you just want to swoop in. And I, and I shared the story. I believe I shared the story with you that the person who reached out to me, someone who reached out to me on Instagram that I have clients who want to incorporate Taino healing into those practices and work that I do with them in the Dominican Republic. So can we set up a call so you can tell me? Absolutely not. You can send them to me. I will speak to them. I will not mm. tell you anything. Oh, well, I just have it. No, you don't. Yeah, I will not tell you anything. And if you don't want to do that, I can refer you to someone who I know was a healer who works in the Dominican Republic, but I, it's a closed practice. I will not tell you anything. And like kept insisting and trying, oh, but I just know what part of no, do you not comprehend? Um, and it, it's kind of that, that idea where, especially when it comes to different types of spirituality and indigenous spirituality, anything indigenous really over in, and across the spectrum of things, um, people think it has less value and no. um, because it is like been made so public or accessible or fetishized you know not just in dress and the over sexualization of women and all of that but the spirituality really fetishized and people selling ayahuasca and all of this different stuff like there's a reason that sage is 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 a problem to have now there's a reason that Palo Santo is a problem to get now because somebody was allowed in the ceremony somebody was trusted or somebody was hungry so they sold information you know and then that was exploited and turned around into things and and you know you look at things with Hinduism yoga is so heavily appropriated and people don't want to talk about that because you're trying to taking what yoga really is and make it the sexualized super, I can be Gumby, you know, weigh two pounds and, and do all these things, but with a goat. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, look God. at what yoga really is the, and the <laughs> principle behind it and, and the work of connecting to one's body and tiring one's body to help focus and still the mind and that connection for what that is and how all of your systems work together like that's 
what it's about and look at what real people who are doing yoga like in India who are actual practitioners what their bodies look like yeah. like it, 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 it's you know I know that like went tangential but but it's it's all related in in the sense of um you know, like there, there is value that is often removed from the things that we do and we teach and we, and we talk about. And it's really important as reconnecting people that, as I mentioned a lot earlier, that you understand that your indig- indigenous identity is deeply intertwined um, into spirituality. And you kind of can't have one without the other. You can't claim indigeneity, but not be grounded in spiritual practice and be working toward that because that's going to shape how you view the world, how you walk through the world, how you're looking at things, how you're looking at information being told um, by us. You know, it, like, I hope I'm making sense. Like I said, I've been up a really long time. <laughs> so no, no, definitely. perfect sense. You know, your spirituality is part of the, it, the decolonization process. And something that you brought up, which was like the vetting process, I think, you know, speaking to it from from the fact that it's like a two way street, I think is important to know as well, because, you know, as much as people are safeguarding their practices, you need to be protecting yourself. Um, like I said before, there are predators, there's all of this stuff, there's definitely red flags to look to. And this isn't to say that there aren't people who have built upon, you know, um, different skills and stuff like that throughout their many, many years on this earth. But when somebody has like 50 different titles, that to me, you know, that's a red flag because it's like, well, then how much work did you really put into each individual title for you to have for you to, you know what I mean? Like jack of all trades, master of none, you know, type type stuff. Um, Again, that's not to say that there isn't people who don't have multiple talents and multiple gifts, but, you know. To I think it was Leilani's point earlier, there is a lot of work that goes into not just, you know, venerating your ancestors and following, you know, a prescription or whatever, but into whatever it is that you decide to put out and, and create or whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't know. My train of thought kind of just crashed and burned a little bit there, guys. Sorry. But- <laughs> I know. It's like oh. neurodiversity at its finest tonight. Like, we're... <laughs> Yeah. Um, And I I think think also just to kind of add to like that last statement that you said about what you put out and what you create. I know we were talking earlier about how like, you know, um, a lot of times you'll see, you know, reconnecting people or, or even not reconnecting just the people who kind of like read the books and then come out and start creating content where they are teaching, you know, these things um, without ever having referenced, you know, a Bahike or, or, you know, a tribe or even going into those spaces. Um, I think, I think you're right about that too. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to, to vet, you know, the, the Bahike, the tribe and keep yourself safe. And it, but it's another thing to like, get the information and then put that content out because like, cause like water Vixen was talking about at the very beginning, it's, it's closed and you won't know what's closed and what's not, you know, just doing your own thing. That part. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think if there's anything, cause where is that nine? We're at nine fifteen, So we hit, I actually hit our two hours, I think, from when we started. I don't know if there's anything. I'm not trying to get rid of anybody. I just, I don't want to, like, keep everybody here forever. So, yeah, Elba, no, I don't know I, if there's anything. I didn't know if you guys wanted to do, I don't know, like, the last 15 minutes of taking any questions. Or if y'all are like, I'm ready to go to bed. Like, we can cut out early. <laughs> how are y'all feeling? I don't know. how many, I don't know how many people are in the room because I'm from, a, like, a different little thing a different app um so i can't see how many people are in in the space but if anyone has any questions i'm down yeah i don't know if this this number up here actually is accurate i can never figure this out i feel like i need a class on tiktok (laughs) according to tiktok 
there's nine people in the room at the moment. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, that shouldn't be too much of a bombardment of questions. <clears throat> and that's if anybody has any. Um, Should we start singing the Jeopardy song? <laughs> oh, to re- nobody's giving free readings. You know, if you have spiritual, like, who is my primary ancestor type questions, that is, that is, <laughs> guys. So, we mean as I far think, as like, I think we did a great job answering. I think we did a great job covering a lot of stuff. I think so too. I feel very proud of us. <laughs> I like your head wrap. You. This is like, this is, uh, I mean, the other one was really pretty too. I really like your head wraps. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, we have a question. So Lady Rose is asking, what do you do to ground generally? Uh, so I don't know if you want to go first or. Sure. Um, there are several definitions of grounding in spiritual practices um, and several uh, several reasons why you would need to do any one particular one of those definitions. But I'm assuming you mean just like when the energy is really high and you want to kind of ground and get back to earth. I'm assuming that that's the most common one that most people assume that it is. Um, and if that's the case, you know, there's a reason why we serve food after ceremony. So eating is one of the easiest ways to ground yourself. Um, However, I never want to promote anything that might cause like problems for people. Um, So I would say, you know, spending time outside, you know, digging in the dirt, putting your feet in the dirt, um, you know, doing a very, very, um, saline salt water bath but like super salinated salt water bath um you can also wear certain metals as jewelry like you can wear more iron and brass that will help keep you grounded but don't wear it all the time just only wear it when you have that excess of energy after ceremony um yeah laughing uh, so watching comedy shows that will help you to ground. Anything else? Did I miss anything else? I mean, I have others that I would add. Yeah, like exercise, right? Clapping, getting your body moving, going for a run, just sort of being present in your body again. Yeah, like I would, like I mentioned earlier, like um, just like taking a deep breath and being conscious of how you're breathing and the mechanism of what your body is doing to take the air in and out that that in itself is is very grounding um drinking water i know it sounds like oh. silly but oh. like drinking drinking water and making sure it's good water like really quality filtered water i try to stay away from bottled water but uh you know filtered water and then you know and and um showering like leilani mentioned the salt bath salt bath is always like um really great not just from the grounding perspective but it can help remove um like like realign things from an energetic perspective like neutralizing um negative negativity that could could be attached to you or just taking a shower um water is very cleansing yeah I try to think of things that I can do as like you know I'm like I'm not near the beach I'm I'm in Brooklyn so so oh yeah no I'm in the country we'd be going to like the beach and rivers and stuff like that (laughs) yeah I mean listening listening to nature sounds could help you if that's something um that works for you you know you kind of have to figure out what works for you because not everything works for everybody the same way. And so that's also that that's something that's really important. A lot of these things are not one size fits all. So it's also tailoring things that, um, you know, work, work in alignment with what feels right to you. Um, There was another question. Uh, Do you have any advice on reconnecting when you're so 
far away from community. Social media is hard. I'm actually going to kick this one to Elba because Elba is further away from us because she's in Florida. Well, I mean, social media, social media is hard. Um, and you do have, like, even if you don't have, like, Daino, um, a large Daino community in your area, um, again, this is, this is part of spirituality as well um, as a mundane thing, right? Recognizing and acknowledging what lands you're on, whose lands you're on. So there are going to be indigenous people of that area in that area. So um, even if you don't have um, a lot of Daino you can come into community with, uh, there are indigenous people in your area that you can build community with. And, um, you know, for all you know, they they know who the other Taino in your area are for you to, you know, it's just um, indigenous is indigenous, really. Um, of course, you want to know your community when you're reconnecting in your culture and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I do think that there um, needs to be more interaction with other indigenous people and you know cultural exchange and stuff like that because uh part of decolonizing isn't just reconnecting with your with the land and and your ancestors and stuff like that too but it's about you know building community and that extends to having a better understanding of other indigenous peoples and their lands because who knows best what grows and what times and all of that than the people who were born and raised whose ancestral mm -hmm. bones are literally buried in that ground. So um, I kind of rambled a little bit, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think you said it perfectly. That no, was that's, that's it. And as far as like, I know that social media is hard, but I will tell you that um, some of the best community building I've done over the past two years has been, you know, from the events and stuff that we've done, um, on Facebook and without social media, I never would have met Elba. And I always have this this joke about when I was like starting my reconnecting journey like a very long time ago, uh, <laughs> you know, finding her videos and like fangirling when I was like, oh my God, like she's a real person, you know, uh, <laughs> and how and how we felt about that. But um, my, my other piece of advice about that is that I know social media can be really difficult. It's not for um, everybody, but maybe finding a couple of people who you think are interesting that may be in your community or that you see on social media and reach out to them and try to, you know, very slowly establish a, a relationship and build a friendship. And, you know, like sometimes that, you know, instead of focusing on like, you know, the many kind of like bring it down to a few. So, you know, there's not as many, things that maybe you feel responsible or obligated to try to interact with. I mean, take advantage of social media in what ways you can, because yeah, there are people out here invalidating and saying the, the like the wildest things, things that like a lot of us have never, have never had said to us to our face before is being said to us via TikTok. Um, but because of social media, you can create your own spaces and so you just kind of have to figure out what spaces are safe. And if there's one that, you know, part of how Taino Library came about was, um, I like to quote uh, Big Weld from that cartoon, that Disney cartoon, Robots, you know, see a need, fill a need. So if for whatever reason, you, you, don't, you don't see a space that you feel um, is welcoming enough, is, you know, Whatever the case may be, you can create your own, you know, um, and invite people into it and slowly, slowly grow. Your community doesn't have to be a hundred people, you know. I think most of us have a community when we think of community, like people that we can call and, and will nine times out of ten answer and, you know, be there for us and, and reciprocate and all that good stuff. It's you can probably count them on both hands. Yeah. So like, I guess to case point, you can, you can start small um, in real life as well as on social media. You don't have mm -hmm. to like a group of 10,000 people and, and start there. Did you want to add something, Leilani? I feel like you have wisdom. No. 
No, I think I think your your first answer too with regards to the land was just a perfectly perfect answer because we oftentimes forget we we focus when we talk about ancestral veneration we often more often than not focus just on the bloodline mm-hmm. but you know I think it's important to know that our ancestral family expands um and it's it's vast it's big and you know the land there's a reason why you ended up where you ended up Mm-hmm. And yes, 90% of it was colonization, but you know what? <laughs> you, you, you made the best of where you're at. You're, you're, you're at where you're at. And I think it's important that you acknowledge the fact that the land is your family now and the people of those lands are your family now. And you can honor, you can honor it in that way. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's plenty of, of, of things to learn indigenously from other indigenous people. You know, exactly. there's like, there's layers to it, right? There's, there's your particular Chayeke, then there's Taino uh, culture and practices and whatnot in general. Then there's just all the indigenous things, which is a global term, as hopefully we've all learned through the very many seasons of TikTok drama. Um, so, so yeah, if you can't directly be, you know, just living among your people in the Yukayeke which I think is a lot of people's idea, um, ideal or goal, um, mm-hmm. then you can start with the people who already, the indigenous people who already live around you, uh, Taino or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, you touch on something that you know is like, is like one of my favorite things to, to, to start talking about, which is that as reconnecting people who are decolonizing and, and re-indigenizing, I always promote that we read books not just about our own culture but I I promote a lot I don't have any of them near me right now because I I move things but books written by uh, like (laughs) BIPOC people or other indigenous people that give an indigenous perspective um because that 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 shapes everything and there's one that I actually I have started reading and, and it's the one that I was like so hype about and I'm sad that it's like I have to like physically get up and look for it but it's I, I mentioned before it's like the the 28 precepts the kinship of of I have to look up the name it's a really long title but basically it's written by um it's 28 like uh constructs of of indigeneity and it's written by various tribes or whatever and it talks about things from an indigenous perspective that involve like being indigenous like um you know, uh, gender fluidity, how can, how important community is things related to spirituality. Um, I'm trying to remember some of them stuff, something about like women and there's one to stuff written about children. And so there's all these like different things and it basically, you know, touches on concepts and ideas that are really critical to like indigenous identity and, you know, things like that, I think are so critical and vital and you know it is my opinion nobody has to agree with me so I'm not like forcing it on anyone but it is of my opinion that as reconnecting people who are relearning what it means to have indigenous community what it means to be and do all of those things you know learning from people who have been able or who have had the ability to retain much more of their structure um or culture than than we did you know that it's you don't appropriate but you like looking to them for the knowledge that they have and it's not about appropriating it's about you know don't kill people is a universal rule right like we just all know like we're gonna have morals and be good people so that's more of what it is about the morals of finding yeah, common ground yeah the so, universal truths yeah exactly. thank you exactly there's a reason certain things you know, are similar. Yeah. So that was a perfect closing statement, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. That was beautiful. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> well, I mean, we're exactly at 930. So since that was a perfect closing point, we can end it right now. Everybody. <laughs> Quick, hit the off button. (laughs) All that good stuff.
You guys, I just I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me on your show. It was just such a pleasure. First of all, meeting Water Vixen, seeing my beautiful, beautiful Elba. I she's since day one. I I just remember we kind of entered the YouTube world sort of at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, so I just I loved growing up with you and I hope we continue. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna embarrass Elba right now. We fangirl over you, but it's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> girling happening because like my message you and you were like sure, I'll come on like oh my gosh she said yes no that, no 100 percent. she messaged me right away she was like oh my god and then we were like there was running around in circles in the house maybe yeah. like, <laughs> no it's not it's not even an exaggeration because Elba and I can literally like get on a phone call and be there with with each other for like six hours and like um <laughs> no it, it's real it's real. Like the, the, so, like, I just want you to know, like, how much I know. I'm like not speaking for Elba, but I can tell you, like, how much we both like really, really, really appreciate you being here and sharing space with us, and you know, yeah. talking with us, and and teaching and learning with us together. Well, like, it really means a lot to us. It does. Um, well, I will say this was one of the easiest. You guys are just so much fun to talk to. It was so fluid. It just felt good. So. Anytime, anytime, I'll be back. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. And then to everybody in the chat who stuck around, who asked questions, who was here with us and also gave the energy and partook in the energy and all of that for the sharing, you know, thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for being respectful and, you know, uh, understanding our boundaries and, and not pushing them. Really, really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You. So, so with that, beautiful people, I wish you all good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.